Today's episode on taking the axe. Um, so now I'm going to use the writings uh, to explain Jesus to the lost. Because, you know, as we talked about repentance, remission of sins, we talked about the resurrection, we talked about the law, the prophets. Now we're going to talk about the writings. So we're going to try to open up their understanding. Because how do we explain Jesus to these people that are lost? And even the ones that are getting to know Jesus and the ones that have been there forever, you could always use the scriptures to sit there, continually open up there. Because, you know, when you're making disciples, there you go. You want to always know. Like, you know, any scripture that's used for the unsaved can always be used for the saved. Like, we're not too good for any of the scriptures. So, all right, so I'm going to go through Psalms 22, 1 through 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? And from the words of my groaning, oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and I'm not silent, but you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and they were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. But I am a worm and no man and a reproach of men and despised by the people. And all those who ridicule, see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip and they shake the head saying, He trusted in the Lord and let him rescue him. And let him deliver him, since he delights in him. But you who took, you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while I was on my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from birth, from my um, mother's womb. You have been my God, but not far from me. For the trouble, for trouble is near. There is none to help. Many of the bulls have surrounded me. And the uh, uh, bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They gape at me with their mouths like a raging and roaring lion. I'm poured out like uh, water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a, a pot's herd. My uh, jaw tongue clings to my jaws. For you brought me uh, uh, to the dust of death. For the dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divided my gar garments among them. And for my clothing they cast lots. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. O oh, strengthen, hasten to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. You have answered me. I will declare your name to the brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. So, so they're going to always ask the question, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? How does that make uh, Jesus Christ Lord? Well, quite simply... Quite simply, there's a there's a two natures, truly man and truly God at that point. And Jesus Christ, he sits there and he emptied himself out to come to earth. So, I mean, and, you know, you see a man that was beaten, you know, became reproach of men. And everything that he went through right here, they also... Another key point is, right there, they predicted his crucifixion about 500 years. They wrote about it 500 years before it was invented. They predicted that he was going to be crucified before that. Just to explain this, and, you know, as he went there... The Father didn't let the Holy One come to corruption. He did not allow him to go to corruption. That's the first thing. Because it talks about the resurrection right there, that 
that Jesus was rescued. You know, he was, because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're all three of them were involved in the resurrection. So all three of them were involved in that resurrection. And right there is all the sins were on there. So it says, my God, my God, why has you forsaken me? Because of the fact that Jesus became sin at that point. He had all that sin right on his back. So to explain this to somebody who's lost, all the sin has been put on Jesus Christ. All you have to do is call him to save you. He was the ultimate sacrifice. He was a sacrificial lamb, and he had to be perfect. And he had to have the ontology of God, the nature of God. I think to help somebody who's unsafe to get to understand that, you need to you try to get them to understand what the term ontology is, which is the nature, and the economical trinity is. That's how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they all three have relationships with each other. To try to get that over to them, and some of this, it shows it. So, and guys, I love you very much, and Jesus loves you. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I mean, we have all have our sin. We've all lied. We've all cheated. We've all stolen. We all have done all these other things. Our actions stink. Our actions are awful. Our um, actions stink. You know, and our, you're going to say you have a good heart, but let's do everything that you ever have thought of doing. Okay? How many times you wouldn't even be executed? It basically would be a puddle of mud at that point. I mean, it would just would be nasty. I mean, you'd go to the darkest parts of hell. How many households would you destroy? How many people would you kill? I mean, just think about these things before you, you think, I'm a good person. Are you really? You're really sure you're a good person? So, and I know what you're going to say. Well, what about the people that don't know their sin? Everybody knows their sin, but they do it all in, in the dark. You look at the bars. They're all dark. You go to the strip clubs. Those women, they all have stage names. They don't use their real names out there. I mean, porn stars, they have stage names. They do it. They may do it publicly because technically speaking, people don't sin publicly. Or they don't admit to it being sin publicly. What I mean by this is they use stage names. They put it in front of people that won't come after them, you know, or won't challenge them. So they do it like in, in their mind, it's like a separate world to them. So they could sit there and move on and they are not remembered, but they got cash in their hands. Where, and so that's, that's the bad news. Sin sucks. You know what's sin. And we know we deserve to go to hell for this. But the good news is the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus can save you from your sin. As whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you know what? Just do it. Just take up your cross daily and follow me. Just drop everything you have. Follow him. Jesus loves you. And if you're not sharing the gospel, you get just... Don't worry about it. You could be throwing that lake of fire as well. Actually be worried about it. So, and, you know, you know, hey guys, I love you very much. Peace.